right. Well, I'd like to welcome everyone to Legally Bliss Conversations. And I would love to welcome Ms. Christine Vartanian. She is a civil engineer and attorney turned personal style expert. She's the founder of Jade for All Seasons in Newport Beach, California. Jade for All Seasons stresses its clients for their personal and professional lives in person and virtually, making daily style effortless. Christine's passion is unveiling the inner confidence of those she serves by making them feel great in their outfits for their everyday image and workplace style. She specializes in the development of signature styles that are aligned with personal brands. As an image consultant, she focuses on everything that goes into brand alignment. During the life of her company, Christina styled company executives for photo shoots and brand photographs. She developed her secret sauce to having a flexible year-round wardrobe. She has served on the FITM Museum Council, and we'll talk about that, and has been featured in multiple publications, including Newport Beach Magazine. Recently, and because of the workforce now working mainly virtually, she created a series of offerings called Waste Up Wardrobe. <laughs> this includes the Waste Up Wardrobe podcast and show. Her podcast focuses on how to have outstanding virtual office from the clothes you wear to space and set design and more. Her Interior Design Institute certification informs her design of client sets as they navigate the virtual working world. She was inspired to start Jade and Waste Up Wardrobe to build ease into the lives of entrepreneurs who do it all, allowing their brand and image to shine. Welcome, Christine. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you for having me. I am so thrilled to be here. Yeah. So, okay. So let's do an earring competition. Who has the biggest earrings today? I don't know. I think you won. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I am the big ear earring stylist. That's yes, just you are. I am. <laughs> and one thing I love is that like you got me a lot more comfortable wearing larger earrings on set and actually utilizing accessories as sort of your exclamation point right to your wardrobe so christine will you tell me a little bit about like kind of your philosophy behind styling and maybe a little bit about your secret sauce yeah so uh, styling for me uh you know it well the whole business model started out as styling the person or the entrepreneur really the, involved the head to toe wardrobing dressing them with clothes getting them ready for stage or for whatever really life you know throws at them if they're in the business world um but in my philosophy is so hugely revolves around the idea that clothing, it's not about the clothes, which sounds ironic. It's more about how the clothes are a tool to up level the inside style, which is your emotional vibration, your confidence, your ability to show up in a way that commands a stage and dominates really in business and really shows that you are, you get that your image is part of your brand. So my philosophy is really unusual in the sense that I always say it's not about the clothes and clothes are only a tool. It's about how you actually, how I style the inside. Mm, I love that. So yeah. when you are approaching styling lawyers versus entrepreneurs in general, is there any way that you go about it any differently? Or is it just kind of go back to what you're saying? It's about kind of that inside that matters. No, actually, thank you for asking that question, because that's so it's so important and it's so it's such a key ingredient to the work that I do and what really holds me and sets me apart from other personal style experts. So <clears throat> I I'm really about building a signature style for each individual and what a signature style is, it's really something that is very personal, very customized. And that's what makes me a little bit different than, um, you know, just, you know, just getting a great outfit. It's more about who you are. What are your sensitivities? What are your hobbies? What's your brand? What's your brand colors? What line of work are you in? Because you can't be a lawyer and show up to court in, you know, in a denim jacket. So there's definitely a different way. <laughs> there's definitely a different way of styling somebody who is in a corporate world, a professional line of work versus somebody that it might be in more of a casual working force. And um, 
And that's so critical to the work that I do. It's really all about creating a signature style um, that up levels both the outside style and the inside style. Yeah, so I guess there should be sort of a, a disclaimer here that Christine helped me <laughs> go through this entire process, right? In terms of like with the waist up wardrobe, as well as helping me with my um, Zoom background. So as part of that process, I do recall now, because we did this in last year, we did a pretty extensive intake. And I do recall you, you know, asking me some pretty in-depth questions about branding. And of course, you know what my career is. Um, but so what, how many attorneys are you working with right now? So it's interesting because I have just a handful of attorneys, but and, and most of my clients are really in the business world. They're entrepreneurs. I mean, I, I have clients who are restaurateurs, like restaurant owners. I have clients who have started a lot of, of course, because there's this trend of, of mentorship and coaching because everybody understands how important it is to you know, hire experts. So I have a lot of coaching people in the coaching industry, people who are CPAs. That's a different professional mm. um, you know, line of work. Mm -hmm. um, I have a handful of attorneys and lawyers. It's interesting though. I find find that attorneys, um, although they know they need to show up, you know, professionally with a suit, that they are not so interested in like um, a sort of a signature style. You know, they're more interested in just being in a corporate um, look. And that's fine. You know, everybody yeah. has their own the way they want to show up. Uh, but I really have clients all over the spectrum. I have a lot of people who live a very casual lifestyle and have to even be casual in the field and their line of work. And that also requires up leveling. So, you know, so lawyers are not a huge, I, 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 it's really all over the spectrum, which I love because then it, it's so different and eclectic. Yeah. I'm sure it's like challenging in, in different ways, right? Just like what you said, like you have, you know, just working with attorneys who maybe do want to kind of blend in more with you know, naturally being in a more conservative field, can you at least help them a little bit in terms of putting some type of exclamation point on their black suits? Yeah. Well, so, and that's what we do. Yeah. So let's talk, yeah. can you tell them, like, yeah. give me, give me a really good lawyer style tip. And, that, and the reason I love, like, I want to go into your background a little bit too, but you are, you have been a practicing lawyer. So you very much, <laughs> you're cracking up. You very much understand and appreciate the world that a lot of us are, are living in, right? A more conservative um, environment, especially like in law firm. And then that, you know, it's, <laughs> there's still that, what is the word like, you know, you, when you go into the courtroom, you know, it's, there's that kind of that expectation that you're not coming in there in, in the jean jacket, right? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Or the yoga pants, no matter yeah. what. <laughs> exactly. And some place, you know, some courtrooms are even more conservative than others, you know? So, um, yeah. So tell me a little bit about like how you think attorneys, female attorneys can kind of like put on that exclamation point in, yeah. the, you know, typically conservative wardrobe. Yes. Well, there's a lot of really good little ideas. Um, and so, I, I mean, I remember back to the days when I was practicing law in the, in the 90s, I, um, you know, we you, some court rooms, you couldn't wear pantsuits, which is so weird. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, so there, there, it, it is very much a conservative setting and it still remains. So not in that extreme, but still you do have to show up in a certain way in front of a judge in a courtroom. Um, so when it comes to creating a signature self for somebody like a lawyer who is in a very traditional uh, professional line of work, it, it, it can be very, it can be very exciting, you know, to introduce lawyers to, oh, well, you could do this to like, spice on the edge. <laughs> yeah. one of the main tips I have, especially yeah. for my lady attorneys is, you know, kind of veering away from the idea that your suit has to be this matched up suit from head to toe, like the bla blazer that matches the skirt, you know, yes, you yeah. can do that, but it's also really cool to be able to mix it up a little bit, right? So take a great blazer that maybe isn't a, you know, a great color, like the one you're wearing, like a lighter blue, and then throw it on, you know, a different color um, skirt, like a cream or, or clay or like a lighter tone, rather than just pair it with just the blue that it came with, right? So that's one way where somebody who's in a conservative line of work, like in the law field, you know, you can actually mix it up a little bit and really flex your wardrobe better. So you 
treat your suits as separate okay. your suit pieces. That is amazing advice. Okay. So I'm not like in the big firm environment anymore. So, but I do, you know, look back to, <laughs> to that world and I had my suits together, my jackets with the matching skirt, right. Or the pants. Sometimes I would get crazy and buy both the pants and the skirt that match, you know, match the jacket. Um, and I would mix up maybe the shirts that would go underneath it. That was about it. And put like maybe a scarf with it, but I love the idea of getting a little wild here <laughs> <laughs> get a little crazy at the law firm and putting on kind of, like you said, like a jacket, sort of like this, maybe um, with, with something that would just a clay, like a clay color. Or yeah. Like a neutral, you know, a neutral, neutral color. color. Yeah. But also can okay. I give another tip with oh. that? Would that oh, be a yes. right yeah. So even like now, you know, and, and trends are trends and like the things they see on the runway, that's just for show. That's not real life um, clothes, right? Even like people are super trendy. Don't wear what you see on the runway. It's but, like an art show, right? Like I look at runways like an art show. Yeah, exactly. But it does offer inspiration to the people who really like to be uh, current in their wardrobe and to designers. That's what you see happen, right? The ev evolution. Like when yeah. you see studs on the on the runway, it might be like big studs coming out of your head. <laughs> but in real life, the way they translate it is, you know, a studded bag or a studded, you know, earring or whatever. So so, so there's ways that you adapt it to real people and real life. But, um, you know, as a lawyer, you know, what would be kind of fun that isn't way outside of that being conservative would be like taking a, a blazer and maybe belting it on the outside. So you're wearing a blazer with a, a pencil mm. spur and you take a great belt and you belt it. So like on the outside. So yeah, that's some studs. Can the belt have suds? Well, that depends whose courtroom you're stepping into. <laughs> Make sure you're careful. But yes, it absolutely. If your personality loves that little micro stud, yeah. you know, of course there's studs and there's studs, right? I mean, yeah. so if there's you're, levels. Yeah. yeah, there's all these levels. So there's micro studs that you can, you can embellish with and, and add that to your wardrobe. And you know what, you know, what's really great to add to your wardrobe, even if you are very conservative, a great pair of statement earrings. Yes. Let's talk about statement earrings, <laughs> statement earrings for, for lawyers. You yeah. actually really helped me get more comfortable wearing statement earrings. And I bought a pair or two or 10 from you. <laughs> 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 Tell me a little bit about like your philosophy um, with with statement earrings and statement jewelry as well. Yeah. So I, you know, part of the idea of the statement earrings for me, it's special to me because I just dig statement earrings. I mean, I feel like it just kind of frames your face, at least personally for me. And especially if you're on camera a lot, you can't really do a lot of accessorizing, but you put one piece of accessory that brings harmony to your look without having like layers of necklaces and bracelets making noises oh, and things like that. Yeah. yeah. But it's like one piece of jewelry that can bring harmony to your look um, and fill, you know, and kind of fill the parentheses on your face. So it just kind of brings harmony to the look, but, but, you know, I'm actually starting a whole statement earring club because people are really digging this look. Right. Okay. And I have people asking me all the time, can you start like a subscription for statement earrings? And so basically I'm starting the, the, the big earring club very soon because okay. I've got people like really asking me for this. Sign um, me up for the big. Earring club. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, is that what you're going to call? What are you going to call it? You know, I mean, I'm going to have to I, wordsmith a little bit with you because you're the, you're the word genius. We'll talk about I was, it. Yeah. We have to talk about it. Yeah. 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 So it, <laughs> that's you get ideas. Like I can tell that you definitely get inspiration from the people that you talk with, right? Like who are like, oh, I really need this. Like when the pandemic happened, right. We, it, we knew that we had to kind of up-level our presence on camera. We couldn't be hanging out in our bedroom with like, you know, the dog, like, well, the dogs in backgrounds are totally acceptable in my book, but you know, we don't need to be seeing someone's bed, right? So you definitely <laughs> took cues from people, right? Like your clients, like, okay, I think people need help with their wardrobe from the waist up. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that. I'd love to, for you to tell me a little bit more about like background sets, like kind of your philosophy behind that. Um, Unless you have anything else you want to say about Big Earring Club, because 
The I think it sounds thing, awesome. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, the only thing about big earrings, honestly, it's it's my thing. I like big statement earrings. And it, what I found is that people really like it and they've thought, oh, let me try it. And I just want to say one thing. It's not about having the giant, most giant earrings, right? I happen to like earrings that really are are pretty large for most people. And these are super light, the ones I'm wearing. So I yeah, do care about that. Light. Because, because most ladies that they don't, they get, they don't like it to be heavy. It's painful and it's not comfortable. So I do seek out statement earrings that are light because I understand that challenge. And that goes back to really creating customized experiences for my clients. You know, I, ha- I and I know I'm going a little off topic, but You're back to one of your original questions, when I'm doing that intake and discovery, I've had clients say, you know, Christine, I have, we're, we're down to the granular, right? I have fibromyalgia. Don't ever put anything on my skin as jewelry. And so I have to come up with a solution because they like accessorizing. So in that instance, we came up with her thing. Her signature accessory was the hair clip. So she always had like something in her hair that was like pretty, like an accessory. So that was her solution. So those are the kinds of solutions that you get in my process. But um, back to the statement earrings, I just feel like they are such a big bang for your buck. You could just wear just the earrings and you've got a complete look. Now, Waste up wardrobe. I know the. I, so, I mean, no, that was good. That was good. And I'm okay. having ideas about big bang for your buck with your bangles. Like, I don't know. Ooh, got, I like that. I've got some names like percolating in my brain right now. But anyway. Well, this is where I have to, you know, give credit to you because when we met, we were, um, we were part of a a masterminding program and we were in a mastermind breakout room and we were sitting down and we were in the middle of the pandemic and we were brainstorming and the waste up wardrobe really came as a result of you just spilling out words. So I appreciate that. And I just want to give you credit for that. So thank you for that. And my um, pleasure. And it's the beauty of a mastermind too, right? Yeah. 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 So when it comes to sets and and your background, I really believe that way supportive isn't just about the clothes. Again, it goes back to my original philosophy, right? My work is never just about the clothes. It's about how clothes are a tool, but also when it comes to waste up wardrobe, it's not just about the clothes because I, you know, with just having recorded episode 85 of my waste up wardrobe show, as you can tell, you can't really speak on 85 topics of clothes. I mean, come on, you know, people get tired, right? But it's about mindset. Your mindset yeah. comes through the camera. It's about positioning. It's about body language. It's about, um, what it looks like behind you. And I am I have such a strong belief about that. So first of all, nobody wants to see your bed. Nobody, nobody wants to see your bed in the background, let alone an unmade bed. Nobody wants that. No. What, it, your teacher doesn't want to see if you're in a lecture, your colleagues don't want to see that, your boss doesn't want to see it, the judge, if you're an attorney, doesn't want to see it. Nobody wants to see, be in that very personal space, okay? So that's an absolute no. And so people were showing up like that and it's because they weren't used to doing this, right? right. But now we're better at this. The new world, uh, yeah. Yeah, but beyond just the bed in the background, it's you can actually use your background as a billboard for your brand. Like, yeah. why not take that opportunity? You can actually have something in your ba- background that reflects who you are, what your brand is, what your hobbies are, and create interest in the people listening to you or watching you about who you are. Mm-hmm. So that's what is my basic philosophy when it comes to waste up wardrobe. Okay, so what are your thoughts? This is going to be like sacrilegious. You're going to kill me, but I can't wait to hear what you say about it. Okay. So what are your thoughts about like the green screen backgrounds that have like the fake ocean front, you know, multi-million dollar house overlooking like the beach. You know what I'm talking about? I know you've seen these yes. it was really popular last year, but what are your thoughts about those yeah. types of backgrounds? Yeah. So here are my honest, authentic thoughts about it. I don't like them. And, but I do feel that in some instances, people need to use them because they'll be traveling, for instance, and maybe they, you know, and they need to have something a little bit more appropriate than a hotel room, maybe in the background. So I understand that, but they should be used very sparingly. First of all, psychologically, when people see you in a set where you're not like, where it looks like you're, it's hidden, right? You're hiding something. People go, what are they hiding behind them? That is psychological and that's real. That's like scientific, like psychological So people think that, that, right? Back there, even subconsciously, you're kind of, yeah. 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 I mean, even if you see, I have my screen behind me, but it's, it's, it's transparent to some degree. Transparent. Yeah. So it's still like, you could see behind me. So nobody's like, what are you hiding? Right. Mm -hmm. But with those backgrounds and the green screens, first of all, people think that. 
Okay, but let's say that wasn't an issue. Nobody really cared about that. Um, it also it also is kind of distracting. And if we're not try- we're trying to have people focus on our message rather than being distracted by how we're looking, it's not that's failing right there. Because if you don't do it right and you get keyed out in certain places because you have this green screen, you'll find that you know when people are moving, it kind of gives this halo. It does something weird. It's like glitchy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's one real big negative about it, right? And it's kind of unauthentic. Like I, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to display some big ocean view behind me if I don't have that. It just doesn't feel like me. So I, I really house? think, yeah, I think that it's good to have it as a backup if you're traveling, but that should not be your permanent set, especially if you're somebody who's on camera all the time. Mm. Yeah, I think that's good. That's good advice. I. Um, I guess when I think about the green screen background, I just immediately think kind of like there's something not authentic going on here, right? And like you said, there are there are obviously exceptions to every rule, every rule. So yeah, absolutely. There's always, you know, I call them guidelines more than rules because yeah. everything is a guideline, right? Because there's sure. always going to be an exception. There's always going to be a special reason why something might not work just as you expect it. So I need to know a little bit about your transition out of practicing law into what you're doing now and, and kind of like, what was your inspiration for that and your, um, the impetus and like your why? Yeah. So I transitioned and retired from, uh, lawyering way before I started my business. I, uh, you know, I, I really wasn't. Um, a lawyer at heart. It was it was a g- great education. I still use it in my daily life because you know education is never a wasted thing. Uh, but I was never somebody that, and I, there was aspects about the law that I loved, but um, but I knew that I would not stay in that area for a long, long time. Um, so I practiced law for a short little career of five years, and then I knew my husband and I really we were very uh, we we were certain that we wanted to set ourselves up so that I can stay home and raise the kids. Mm-hmm. And he was able until I transitioned to our family to be able to do that. And then I ended up being a stay at home mom for ten years. I feel very privileged that I was able to do that because I know not everybody is, but I felt like I was just in the right place that I needed to be at the time. And I spent ten years just raising, having babies and raising them. And that was amazing. And so we had four kids during that time. And it was during that. And I always knew that I would start a business at some point in my life. I just didn't know when, and I didn't know what, and I didn't want it to be um, just like I hung a shingle and became the next interior designer. Cause a lot of my peers were doing things like that, you know, like as a hobby business. And that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted something transformational, meaningful, and something that really spoke to my why. So during the 10 years of being a stay-at-home mom, I witnessed so many of my friends totally letting go of their self-care completely. You know, they weren't eating healthy. They weren't um, dressing themselves. They weren't putting any makeup on. They, I mean, and you know, I'm not talking about like full makeup. I'm talking like even just a little blush and lipstick, right? They, they were dressing their kids and their kids look cute and healthy and happy, but they were giving of themselves and depleting themselves in the, in the interest of others. And that's what generally women tend to do. It's just our nature of being nurturers. Sometimes we forget about ourselves and sometimes it just becomes too much work to go there, right? So I was just like, ladies, no, you can do all those things. You can be a somebody who works in and out of the house. You could be a stay-at-home mom. You could be uh, somebody who volunteers in the community and raises kids and is a wife, all that thing. But you also can be there for yourself and you can give a little bit of that time for you. And I was just, and I had a lot of friends that used to want me to go shopping with them. And I just decided one day, I'm like, okay, I know I'm going to do something. And I thought, I'm going to design outfits for my friends and people. And I had this big party and I invited everybody I knew and I styled people with wardrobe, like several outfits and they walked away happy. And I made, I think I made like $5,000 that day. I was like, whoa, I'm onto something here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it started. And that's, I love it. that's, you know, why it started. Mm-hmm. I think that's such an amazing story. So when you look back at your legal career, and I think that you underestimate you like your career a little bit because you kind of said something like oh just five years I mean five years <laughs> that's pretty darn good right like that's yeah. plenty of time to really start 
digging your heels in literally <laughs> into yeah. the practice of law, right? So yeah. when you look back on your career, um, where do you see what you learn as a lawyer impacting you now as a business owner and entrepreneur? Yeah, that's a really good question. And uh, I was on an interview not that long ago where somebody asked me, wow, you left the lawyering career and to be home with your kids. And I, my answer to that piece was, I, I got that a lot, you know, when I was a younger mom. And my answer, I always laughed at that because I thought it was really a funny perspective because I view educating a woman as educating a family. 100%. And, and I use my education to educate my children and in everything that I did. I mean, whether it was negotiating with them or, <laughs> <laughs> or, or being commandeering with them or, you know, um, teaching them how to be creative, all those things I learned as an attorney, uh, being able to adjust and pivot and all those things I learned in, in my career as attorney and all those things informed my motherhood job, the job, my career as a mom. And so back to your original question about how I see it today impacting me. I mean, I, as a lawyer, you probably can relate to this. I'm always thinking like a lawyer. So I'm always thinking about if something comes up about liability, about looking at it from different perspectives, yeah, yeah. the analytical part of trying to analyze um, how something will work for somebody or not. Um, as a lawyer, I find, I feel as though you, you are that person that when somebody engages you as their lawyer, you're basically taking their problem and loading it up onto your shoulders mm -hmm. And carrying them through that. Yeah. And in my work today, I will take generally a woman, because I most of my clients are women, I'll take her pain of not feeling as confident as she wants to feel, not feeling beautiful at times, and I'll fold it into myself and I'll carry that for them and mm -hmm. guide them through it. Mm -hmm. And actually, I just got chills because that really resonates with me as a as a person. And yeah. I um and I hold like I I fold them into me. And it's kind of that same idea. When you're a lawyer, you do that with, for your clients. And yeah. when you are, when you, when you're in my line of work, the way I do it with my process, that's what I do. Mm, I love that. So let me ask you this, how, how, like when you were a stay at home mom for 10 years, I think you make a, a really good point that that was a very privileged position to be in. You're very, very fortunate to get to do that. Um, how do you see what you learned in that role impacting you as a, as a business owner now? My mothering role? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and that can be, you don't have to answer something kind of interesting, I guess, to think about, because I think that a lot of people maybe underestimate the importance of like every stage of their life being like a learning experience. Mm -hmm. Right. And like, holy crap, Christine, like you managed you and your husband and four humans. Right. So that is a lot of like leadership experience man, yeah. man and organizational. Like you yeah. have to be obviously very organized um, to do that. Cause I know all of your, your, your children are, well, I don't know if they're all, no, at least two are extremely athletic. Your two older ones, um, I think one on, does track and one plays football in college now. So like, obviously they were playing sports probably from a fairly young, young age. So I have a really good answer for that original question you asked okay. about how my um, mothering career um, it impacts my current career. Uh, I was just talking about this at my la a mastermind I was at. at and, um, and so I always like to say that I call myself my client's fairy godmother. Yeah. And the thing that I <clears throat> love most is that I treat my clients like they're my children. Mm -hmm. When I know that sounds kind of strange, but what bigger love is there out there than the love of a mother for her children? Mm -hmm. And I just, when I, when somebody engages me and trusts me that much to invest with me, you know, um, they trust me that I will take care of them, that I will nurture them through this process, that they're 
actually giving me money to to invest in to invest in me for them. I feel very, I hold that very dear. And I ha- I feel nurturing towards them. I feel like I'm their mom. Like I even told my mom that my clients are like my children. She's like, well, they're not your children, but I'm, but they are, you know, it's metaphorical. <laughs> um, and I feel as though that's my role for them is to care for them. Like a mom would when they were little, their mom dressed them. Now that they're a little older, <laughs> I dress them. And so I, the mothering experience, really, it's a very nurturing experience as a, as a personal style expert for them. Does that answer your question? It does. It does. Um, I think that you really kind of took that keyword nurturing, right? Like you're, you're nurturing as a mother and you took that experience of nurturing and, you know, I can 100% say for a fact, like that's how I felt working with you, right? Like I felt very cared for. And I think that, you know, I even mentioned on occasion, like, oh, I feel like you're my, like my big sister helping me like, you know, dress and, and do all of these things because you were just always there for me to lean into when I had questions. And that was not just about, um, you know, helping me with my zoom set, but also with dressing and you're, and you still are, which is, which is amazing. And by the way, I need to get some basics so we can talk about, <laughs> we can talk about that after the show. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that after the show. But you know what? That might be actually something kind of fun to touch on a little bit too, if you would like, if you have a, a little time, like we are getting a little close to time, but, and I don't want to, I want to be respectful of your time. Um, but I would love to know your thoughts kind of on basics for lawyers and yeah. just a couple of your like favorite pieces that you recommend, recommend. And one thing I love about you, you are also, and you, this is something you did not mention, I think is really important. Like as a mom, you were, you taught your, your kids, like their ABCs, right? Like I'm sure these little rugrats knew their ABCs before they started preschool. I know the Bartanian children did. So, and, and that is something that you, you have, integrated into um sort of your your style philosophy so i'd love for you to talk about that a little bit yeah if you'd okay. like to i love that i love that yes okay. i will do it all in that shell so okay. i <laughs> as a mom i learned and just as a as a lifelong learner myself i as somebody who really loves to learn i when i struggled learning um with something a topic or a subject or something i would i would stop everything i'm doing and I would break it down into baby steps, mm-hmm. into ABCs, into like, let me just take it one little bit at a time. If I take it one little bit at a time, if I just, you know, take it slowly, then I will get the big picture. And it worked for me. Mm-hmm. So, and I find that it worked as a mom, like when something was a conflict or a struggle, if I broke it down and helped help my child understand it in smaller pieces, then they actually got the big picture all of a sudden, right? So same goes with my philosophy with clothes and dressing people. I um, I come up with the ABCs for almost everything. I feel like style is a language and every language has an alphabet. And when it comes to basics, I feel like they're, ama- they're so essential to your wardrobe. You have to have the basics that you were referring to earlier. Because if you don't have a ba- the basics, you're going to be one of those people that walks into your closet and says, oh, I have so many things. And I always feel like I have nothing to wear. That was me. That, that, yeah, that, that, almost everybody does that. And it's because most of the time it's because people have not curated the important basics and basics. This is the way to think about basics. This is my philosophy is that if a vowels are the glue that hold the words together in the alphabet, your basics function as the glue that pull your outfits together. So imagine not having any basics. It's going to be really hard to make outfits out of your clothes. So yes. that's one basic philosophy, no pun intended, <laughs> uh, one philosophy of mine that I really teach my clients and I show them how that works. As far as, like I said, style is a language and every language has a, has an alphabet. I Anything I do, I will create a mnemonic based on ABC. So I did a whole client experience 
a talk to a group of bridal store owners, and it was sort of the customer experience ABCs, and A stood for audience, B stood for building, C stood for curating. I mean, and so that's how it works. And so everything that I do, I really try and roadmap through the ABC. So whatever it is, it's if it's the, you know, if it's basic ABCs or, you know, know, um, you know, the customer journey ABCs or, you know, the ABCs to finding trend. It's always about that. And the mnemonic chain, the mnemonic is the same. It's about ABCs. And I could take it all the way to Z if I wanted to. (laughs) If I had yet, I am challenging you. I probably me too. You're doing, you're going to, you're going to get through Z. X might be a problem. X might be a problem. Or we can just cross out something. I don't know. You need a xylophone when you're... (laughs) I don't know. We'll, you'll yeah. figure something out. I am. I am very confident. Um, yeah. You recently did a podcast on. I want to say it was on a, kind of updating your wardrobe for the spring. Yeah. <clears throat> and you use a mnemonic device. Then. Uh, I'm sorry. Did I did I use mnemonic for that? I'm trying to think what it was. <laughs> Can't remember the mnemonic device. You know yeah. it's bad when you can't remember the the mnemonic. But I can't, I remember thinking like I have to because it was like curate, like yeah. the person was a curate, right? And it was like just it was about going through your wardrobe and kind of refreshing it. Yeah, or, I'm trying to remember that specific episode, but I did do a podcast podcasting ABCs because many people after I created my podcast wanted me to teach them how to, to put, you know, start up a podcast. So yeah, like yeah. podcast ABCs and A stood for audience and B stood for brand and C stood for something else. So, you know, and so for the, for the wardrobe, I can't remember that specific episode, but yes, I mean, that's just how I build the baby steps into learning something for somebody. Yeah. I love that. And like I said, it's such a great way to have integrated just your, you know, being a stay at home mom. Right. So I think that you make a really good point that like, there's so no matter what stage of life we're at, like we're learning things and we can take things that we learn and apply it to like a second career. And, and so many people are like, oh, well, my life will be stagnant if I'm a stay at home mom for five years or 10 years. And I hear people fret about this. I'll never be able to get back into the workforce. You know, all all of these, like, I think sort of natural trepidations, but at the end of the day, um, we're always learning, right? We're always growing no matter what we, what we're doing. And it's always valid. Yep, exactly. I I truly believe that. And I think that, um, you know, I think the career of being a lawyer is so robust. Mm-hmm. I feel like you can really do anything with a law degree yeah. because it, it, it informs so many areas of life. It's good just it's good to know the law, and it informs so many different areas of life. And and be going through law school and the bar exam and all that that is a tough process. If you can get through that, I mean, there's so much you can adapt and and learn from that and be able to teach others. Mm-hmm. So if you could write a letter to yourself the day after you graduated from law school, what would you, what piece of advice would you tell yourself? Yeah, I would say appreciate the season and the moment you're in every moment of your life. Because sometimes as business owners or professionals, we're like, well, we want to quickly climb up the ladder. We quickly want to scale our business. And the reality is there's no quick way to get there. You just have to trust that you're exactly in the right place at that given moment. And going faster isn't going to get you there any faster. It's just going to cause you anxiety. So just sometimes, and we all go through that. I go through it all the time where I'm like, I just want to implement this idea and be done. But the reality is that you have to appreciate the process. You have to marinate in the process. You have to get that experience as you go to be able to reach that goal. So my advice, the one piece of big advice I would be is don't rush things. Just appreciate the season you're in. And I'll say that every phase of my life so far, I've really slowed myself down to really think that. And then just reflecting back for for like, you know, for the past part of my life, I, I feel like I had this privilege and honor when I thought about that to really appreciate where I was at a given moment. Hmm, I love that so much, Christine. <laughs> That's so good. So 
I'll ask you one more question if, if you have a, just another minute or two. I have all day. I can talk okay. about my stuff all day. I can talk, talk about all this. Eight o'clock tonight. <laughs> okay. So you're good. in addition to the big ass, beautiful earring club that you're coming out with, yeah. um, what's next for you? What's next for um, Waste Up Wardrobe and Jade? And I, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about um, for all seasons versus yes. maybe yeah. the style and, and all of that goodness. So yeah. next. well, the business is <laughs> growing up. The business is growing up. I mean, this is my ninth year in business and it's wow. growing it's growing up. It's maturing. And, you know, when I started a baby business, it was Jade for all seasons because that's what it was at the time. And that's just where it came from. It was Jade. The stone Jade is very symbolic of health and wellness. And so that was where, I, and it, what I was truly believed that I was contributing to women's health and wellness by upleveling their, you know, inside and for all seasons was just sort of a, you know, a, that was my being able to say that's something you do all year round. But now that I have different suites in my business <clears throat> uh, and different silos, really, I wanted to create a house because I'm a nurturer. I want to create a place where women come to be. They feel safe. They feel happy. They feel joy. They feel served in every area of their lives. And the house houses right now three suites the suite of styling you. Your, your head to toe wardrobe, okay. the suite of styling you on camera, waist up wardrobe, and the suite of brand styling you, which is mm -hmm. your brand colors, your brand logo, and everything really that goes into a brand exploring your why, yeah. that deeper why. So that's all cool. those things, I do that with my clients and they all are housed under the Jade House of Style. So that's what's right. next in evolution. It's evolving from my baby business to my more maturing business and being able to serve um, women uh, with the woman entrepreneur professional wear in every area of their brand. Mm, okay. I love that. So where can um, people find you, Christine? Yeah. So I am everywhere on social media. <laughs> It's really easy to connect with me. It's I am so easy to find people these days. Like no one can hide. Oh, really? <laughs> I am for the professional. I am on LinkedIn under Christine Vartanian. Um, I'm on Instagram as Jade House of Style and Waste Up Wardrobe. I'm on Facebook at, um, at Jade for All Seasons currently because I'm in the transition period and Waste Up Wardrobe. That's where my show um, goes um, live every Thursday um, on Facebook at Waste Up Wardrobe. And my website is Jade Waste House of Style Wardrobe. <laughs> it is wasteupwardrobe.com, but it's also jade for jadehouseofstyle.com. Okay. Okay. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah. And I think you forgot. Did you mention YouTube? I am on YouTube. Yes, I'm and, everywhere. That's I'm on where YouTube. I stalk you is on YouTube because I'm a yeah. YouTuber, not a Facebook. I'm not on Facebook that much, okay. but it's, yeah. I'm not always, but I, I do like to kind of jump in on those uh, lives that you do on Thursday. Yeah. And you're so consistent. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, the only way to build and grow and to, and to, you know, really create my dream, my big, big picture vision is to stay consistent. So that's really important to me, even though sometimes I don't feel like doing my show. And even though sometimes it's really hard to come up with a topic, a nice, fresh topic. I mean, 85 episodes so far, yeah, everywhere yeah. feels fresh. There's better episodes than there are others, but you know, there's something, somebody out there that will be touched by something. And yes. then, um, I also, I also am on iTunes, the show waste up wardrobe is on iTunes. So you can oh, listen. Okay. To it. Yeah. Rather than just watch it. Although it is a very visual show, it's but very visual. Yeah. But you can also just listen to it on iTunes. Okay. And we're on Spotify as well. And, um, and YouTube, of course. Okay. Yeah. But it's always fun to get on live and get to see your pretty face. You did a great episode. Um, I think it was within the last couple of weeks that, um, how to dress like a Parisian and, I've always wanted to be able to do that. It was, it was such a great episode. Thank Love you. It. Appreciate that. One of thank my you. favorites. So thank, Christine, you. thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you. This thank has you. been so much fun. Thank you for having me. Okay. Have a great one. You too.